Hello, McFluffy52 here, back with some more March of the Machine action. Today we're playing a Slesnia plus one plus one counters deck. Well, I say Slesnia, but we're really only running two cards with white in them. And the first card is Botanical Brawler, a new card from March of the Machine. This card is awesome in a plus one plus one counter deck. And this deck is heavily built around getting Botanical Brawler as big as possible. It is one green, one white for an OO Trample but it enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. So it's basically a two, two trampler. And then whenever one or more plus one counters are put on another permanent you control, if it's the first time a plus one plus one counter has been put on that permanent this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Botanical Brawler. This means Botanical Brawler can get absolutely massive because every other creature we have can get plus one plus one counters or give plus one plus one counters. Now the other card in white we're running is Hopeful Initiate because this card works really well with Botanical Brawler. If we can curve out Hopeful Initiate into Botanical Brawler, uh, we can kind of just keep attacking in and our creatures will get bigger and bigger because Hopeful Initiate has training. Whenever this creature attacks with another creature with greater power, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. So Hopeful Initiate, when it attacks, will get a plus one plus one counter because it has one power. Botanical Brawler will have two power. And then Hopeful Initiate getting that counter triggers Botanical Brawler. Botanical Brawler gets another plus one counter and it keeps growing. So you can just keep on attacking in this way and they'll just get bigger and bigger. We also have Ozolith, a new card, which whenever one or more plus one plus one counters put on an artifact or creature you control, put that many counters plus one plus one plus one counter instead. And then you can pay two mana, tap it, and put a plus one plus one counter on target artifact or creature you control. Now this has been a lot more relevant than I thought. Uh, when you just kind of run out of things to do in your hand, you can just kind of throw around counters and just make a more scary board. Uh, being able to grow your creatures so they can attack like uh, efficiently without having to worry about losing them is also very helpful. Uh, besides that, we're playing Tribute to the World Tree just because it's a great card in green. And uh, let's go ahead and hop in some games. Uh, if you have any questions about the deck you can look in the description there will be a link to the deck on an ether hub so you can see the deck there uh, you can ask me in the comments or you can join the discord and ask me about it there also feel free to join the discord if you just want to want to chat all right let's see how we can do here on on the ranked ladder um but yeah if you enjoy videos like this consider subscribing because we try and make videos new videos or new decks new standard decks every single day and try and have fun all right Ooh, we got hopeful initiate which is super nice um we don't really have a great curve for it but might as well play it on one we're playing tyvar stand originally i had more expensive payoffs like the the big old dinosaur with convoke from the set uh the problem was is standard is basically watching all of your creatures die as you play the mount and so having this kind of protection that can also be a finisher is just too good to pass up um or like it's, it's too good to not play here i think we'll we'll see some use out of it uh glissa that is a nightmare but uh we can go ahead and play wow we don't have many good options here well we can play this and then the backup we can put a pulse on counter and create a tap treasure token so we can get to this defiler vigor here and then create yeah the the treasure so next turn we can go in with a go ahead and drop the defiler vigor this put plus one counters or it's a five mana six six trampler and as an initial cost to cast green permanent spells you may pay two life and then that way you can pay less green mana if you do it that way but whenever you cast a green permanent spell you get to put a plus one counter on each creature you control which can be huge um i don't really want to block this glissa uh, because we're gonna have Defiler and that's gonna make all of our creatures bigger, which is kind of important. So they can just go ahead. It is annoying that they can remove counters from permanents, but if they're, they should go for the draw a card. Yeah. Card advantage is gross. It's the strongest thing you can do. Ivar. Okay. So they're probably playing a lot of tiny dorks here. No, they untapped it. That is unfortunate, because now they can hold it up as a blocker. Which is, uh... Not... Not as good for us. We'll create another tap treasure token, I think. We could grow the Gallagher Readers, but... 
Is they are they gonna use the Tyvar to give their Glissa pseudo vigilance? Because then we're gonna need multiple like large trampoline threats or a Tyvar stand. No, you're kidding me. I didn't see the mana dork. Alright, well next turn we'll be able to hold up Tyvar stand on top of it. So maybe we shouldn't have played anything out, but I really didn't wanna just let the opponent take over the board and develop it. Oh, I, I, yeah. This deck, I'm really happy with the... Okay, well, that's, uh, that's game. Can't get around Toxville. We have no removal in this deck because, well, I guess we could play Destroy Evil or something, but green doesn't have removal. We're not going to play a big enough creature to just bite spell effect it, so, like, that's just, that's just over. Game over. I... But yeah, I, like, I'm really happy with this deck in terms of, like, we can get some really aggro starts if we're allowed to curve out, but the amount of removal in standard right now makes this deck kind of miserable to play, in my experience, because you just, you can't ever develop it like you, develop your board like you want to. Because right, play one creature, it dies. Play the next creature, it dies. <laughs> it's just, uh, there's enough efficient removal that people don't really have to hold anything back. Alright, Mono Red, if they don't go for, like, removal on our creatures, we might actually have a pretty good uh, like, chance here. I think I'm going to actually play Streetwise Negotiator here, because I don't want me to play out, like, Botanical Brawler, and then have it immediately die to a, a burn spell, because this card is so good if we can get it to stick around. We're gonna, oh, wait, we can't even hold up a burn, uh, a protection spell, so that was kind of, okay, now we can hold up a protection spell. Got a green source, yeah. We're gonna have to pay a green for the botanical brawler anyways, so uh Unfortunately, uh this creature is super cool. Backup one. Uh, it's two mana. March of the machines. Let me go through the entire attack step. Two mana for March of the Machines. It is an O2 a backup one, so when it enters the battlefield you can put plus one counter on target creature. If that's another creature, it also gains the abilities below this printed one until the end of turn. Uh, and this creature assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So, it's like a 2 mana 3-3, three, three, sort of. Not really, but sort of. Opponent is holding back their Electrostatic Infantry, which is interesting. Alright, well we can play out this. Um, and I think we can just go ahead and swing in to some degree, and then we can just trade the block with stuff. This trains, this gets a plus one counter because of that. Oh, we also can channel the Seed of Iganjo. If they go to block or something, we can just actually blow it up. To do block with your Electrostatic Infantry, I would love to get it off the battlefield. <clears throat> yeah, I think we have a few too many light sources in this deck. That would be one feedback that I also have. Ah, uh, but... So far, so good. We got the Hopeful Initiate Botanical Brawler, like chain going on. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to pump three into our botanical. Actually, you know what? Let's hold up the protection spell because we can still hold up protection if we do this and channel the land. And then we get three damage through because it's trample. And then next turn we might be able to finish them off. We might be able to finish them off. I have Titanium's Command in here because it does something very similar to Defather Vigor. You can put two plus one counters on each creature you control, and you can also create two 2-2 two, two bears. And that's really strong with Botanical Brawler because if you can have a bunch of creatures that you put a bunch of counters on... If you can have a bunch of creatures that you put a bunch of counters on, your Botanical Brawler is going to explode in power and toughness because it gets a trigger from all of those creatures that you put counters on. Alright, uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and attack in. I thought it kind of has to block you, because otherwise they're dead. And yep, they go ahead and scoop it up. We, we made it through. Yeah, that was a pretty good... Mono Red, I feel like, is a decent matchup for us, as long as we don't get burned, all our creatures get burned out too easily. So I think the inclusion of Tyvar Stand and removal of more expensive spells allows us to kind of recover or protect ourselves from that more so. Let's see how we can do. I, It's also a pretty insane curve if you can just get like a, like the Hopeful Initiate into like the Ozolith or the Ozolith with like another just like 
two mana creature because then you just even if you have like nothing better to you you're just dumping more power and toughness into uh the creature it gets pretty crazy yeah i feel like we could get rid of a planes or two um because we keep we need triple white for tribute to the world tree tribute to the world tree three mana enchantment whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control draw a card uh its power is three or greater, otherwise put two plus one plus one counters on it. And currently we're not going to be able to play it next turn, so we're going to have to play other things. But we can, if we play Botanical Brawler this turn, or this next turn, we should have an amazing curve. Uh, I, hope, I hope they go for the Tribute here, honestly. The Botanical Brawler is really good if we can get it down. They do go for the Tribute, which is kind of a mistake. We don't even have the mana to play it. But yeah, we do this. This one comes in, the, the other Botanical Brawler sees it has plus one counters, and then the new Botanical Brawler sees that the other one got just got a counter. Uh, so yeah, they trigger each other, and quite fun. Invasion of Gobblecon, I think we're going to be saying goodbye to our Defiler Vigor, but we really don't need these expensive spells to win. That's kind of what's terrifying about this deck, is like, we can, we can drop a bunch of like one and two mana creatures and just let them sit on board and eat. And it'll do a lot of damage. One mana counter spell in green or white? No? Okay. This one gets a plus one counter. The other botanical brawlers see that it gets a plus one counter. They trigger. And then they trigger each other. Because they see the other one got a botan or a, a counter. So they go up to five fives, I think. It's disgusting. These, these botanical brawlers, they're uh, so good in plus one plus one counters. But you can see our opponent like hasn't had removal for them and we've got them to stick on the board. It doesn't even matter that they've taxed the crap out of our other stuff. Wandering Emperor, that's not going to be enough to save them. Actually, they gain two life, but still, I think we do... If we like top deck a creature, we're still quite... Yeah, yeah we still had 10 damage, actually. <laughs> that's uh, that's the plus one plus one counter goal, is just... Get those botanical brawlers and those other creatures that get counters and just watch the triggers fly. It's crazy. Trying to think of... But yeah, you can get some really impressive board states where you just have like a bunch of like 10 tens. Uh, but of course, uh, I usually our opponent's dead before that. This is actually a pretty good hand. Though, my question is, what is our opponent playing? We do get to go first, which is a privilege that is going to save us, potentially, from losing our creatures here. But, uh, alright, blue, that means there might be counter spells. Uh, what do we do? Kind of want, like, most of these things to resolve. The one that I care least about having... Wait, this turn they can't counter spell, they have one mana. They could bounce spell though, to be fair. We'll put this on the streetwise negotiator. Then I just bounce it. Mm -mm. We got the uh what is this uh card? Cryptic Command? Is that the the name of the card in the art? Like the I think it's three blue and then you can either like counter a spell, gain control of like a one mana Oh, they're spirits. Okay, hold on. That's, uh, that's much better for us. Uh, well, I guess we can just attack in and see how it goes. Technically, our hopeful initiate doesn't get anything here. Whenever it attacks or blocks, sacrifice it at the end of combat. Um, I mean, do we want to protect this? Yeah, we can still protect this for one mana. It's gonna die anyways, so we don't have to worry. And then we can play like Ozolith. Or we could play... Let's play the Beast Caller because it's a little bit more important than it resolves and we'll have two mana open to pay for like a make disappear potentially. Dorothea. Um, what do we want to do? I kind of want the Ozolith out. And then we can play the Gallag Readers and it'll still grow our Beast Caller quite a bit. Opponent has one mana. Spell Pierce, but we have the mana. 
is kind of annoying. Um, opponent though, just concedes. Yeah, these aren't. Never seen anyone play. Uh, what was the card name? Dorothea Vengeful Victim in in ranked. It is very interesting. It can like the backside of it can be very like uh, scary if you don't have any like flying blocker or creatures with reach because it. Every time the enchanted creatures attack or attacks, it gets a 4-4 white spirit creature token that's also flying and attacking. So it's an interesting card, but uh, <laughs> definitely not the ideal land, I guess. We get a mythic. Well, I clicked a few too many times too fast, and we don't know what we got. It will say in the collection usually when you pull it up. It's like, oh, new. The, the flying or the uh, lit up border over top we'll be able to figure it out all right this hand is all right the hopeful initiates with a tap land that is kind of awkward we have him enough eh, I think we're gonna actually mulligan this one this hands better I guess uh, I mean we could Maybe we keep the land, toss the tribute, because we're not going to be able to pay for the tribute as it stands. We'll play the brush land first because, you know, maybe we top, de top deck into more green sources. We top deck into brush land. It's unfortunate. We'll be fine. Um, once we get this botanical brawler down, we'll have, we'll have three threes. Which is cool. Fun's playing Jessica, uh Spell Slinger. Ouchies. And we can go ahead and attack in. Opponent's probably not going to block here. This is quite the cool creature itself. If he can flip it into Kitaxian Spellstalker, Prowess Prowess is nutty. It is nutty. They cast like two spells and it's a 7 7 Ward 2 Trampler. One's got three mana now. They have their own Pain Land. Fortunately, we drew into quite a few pain lines. <clears throat> Though, I have to say, Slesnia is one of the more supported colors in terms of uh, dual lands right now. You got the brush lands, you got the fast lands, or you have the pain lands, you have the fast lands, and you have the slow lands. The pain lands, like you pay the life, the slow lands, the ones that come in untapped if you have two or three. Uh... I think it's like two yeah if you have more than two lands uh they come in untapped and then you have the fast lands which come in untapped if you have like three or less lands or something they're phrased slightly different than that but they function <laughs> that way can't remember All right. play this Is their opponent going to double block here? I mean, they could if they wanted to. Nope. They're going on their plan. That's fair. Monastery Mentor. This is a very scary card from the new set. Three mana, two, two with prowess. So whenever they cast a spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. And then whenever you cast a non-creature, or sorry, non-creature, I should specify. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Uh, so it has prowess. And then it creates... Uh, a 1-1 one, one with prowess whenever you cast a non-creature spell, so. I don't think it, I've seen too many people playing it, though. I, ha I haven't had a ton of time to, uh, really see what everyone's playing in ranked. Oh, they went with the, uh, Universal Legends art. Fair enough. When you cast an instant or sorcerer, you may tap two untap creatures you control if you do draw a card. Hi, this would work well in like a convoke deck. That's cool. But they didn't convoke it out. They should have just convoked it out. Wait, what? Oh, tap two untap. My bad. I'm completely lost. Fine. Everything's fine. We're not gonna die here, I don't think. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go with the no blocks here because they are dead on the return. And we'll go ahead pump four into this. 
Yeah. Boom. All right, another win. Wow, we're performing a lot better. I was playing in standard queue and I was at like a 50% win rate. Though, granted, I think a few of the matches I conceded rather quickly because I was was not in the best of moods. I saw like a shield had dropped turn four after playing a fable, and I was like stuck on stuck on land, and I was like, no, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem with like yeah they were playing like grixis and it's like i don't know if we can really outvalue grixis we're very much an aggro deck now this hand is horrendous we have four defiler vigors in the deck we have two titanius commands and we got one land all right this is more keepable let me get rid of the defiler because the world trees are at least maybe closer to being playable oh gosh mono white is terrifying Oh, nope, it's Azorius. I hate it more. Okay, well. I'm gonna pass turn here. They're just holding up a make disappear. No, they're soldiers. Damn it. Okay. I haven't seen soldiers in a while. I thought it was interesting. I, I put out a poll. Maybe they were holding, like, protect the negotiators as a counterspell. I've seen some soldiers decks playing that card. Uh, we're stuck on lands. They have already developed the board. They just need like two more cards in Arbin. That's fine. I don't think there's any way we win from there. Our cards are so, so mishmashed. I do think there's probably some extra like changes you can make to this deck. Get rid of like the a Defiler of Vigor or two maybe. I don't know. Cause these hands have not been great. <sighs> farmland's okay, because we don't have any one drop, so we can play down the farmland and then the, the other land. Take out a Defiler Vigor for a, <laughs> another land, I don't know. Opponent's playing green here. So if they're playing like standard mono green, we might be... Like normal mono green, we might be in trouble. This says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, or a creature spell, sorry, he gets a plus one counter, so we'll try and play that out next turn, maybe. Play down the blade, serpent blade assailant. No way you have a fight spell. No way. Oh no. I kind of wanted the botanical brawler to live. We're not going to be blocking. They can get their uh, free land. There's a new card. When it deals combat damage to a player or battle, surveil one. You may then return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. In surveil, they look at the top card of their library and they put, may put it into a graveyard. Or put it into the graveyard, sorry. Or your graveyard. Their graveyard. You know what I mean. Ah, English is hard. <laughs> Alright. Opponents. Trying to decide what they want to do. They're... I haven't seen anyone playing the Deep Root Wayfinder. Ah, uh, yeah, they had a fight spell. <laughs> Why? Why are you gonna be this way, opponent? Um, like, I don't know if I want to play out more things just to get fight spelled. Hmm. Please don't, like, kill everything I play. Just because you have the Deep Root Wayfinder, which is, like, one more power and toughness. I mean, sorry, one more toughness than my creatures. You get to put a land in it, so I'm ramping. I haven't seen Prolucranus a whole ton, so this should be interesting. Uh, if we play this, it's only a 2-2. Two -two. So maybe we play out... Play out this. Get a counter. And we can give this death touch if we want. Seems fine. Our opponent's probably not gonna block with Polyrkinus. They might have another in hand. If they do, then they'll block, but. And then we can hold up our death toucher 
This is a three mana. I have two copies of this in the deck. Uh, two mana. Or sorry, three mana, two one death touch with backup one. So it's kind of like a three two death touch. Um, but I have it so we can give death touch to our creatures with trample here that get really big. Because if we can get a creature with, uh, if we can give a creature with trample death touch, what happens is it then only needs to do one damage to the creatures that are placed in front of it, and so it can trample over for a ton of damage. And sometimes people don't expect this, which is very nice. Go ahead, cast this out, I think. I I might have to change from this pet. Sometimes it'll go into animations, like, where it just repeatedly does this, uh, like, panting thing. And it's quite a bit of an, a bit obnoxious. It's a very, like, I love the pet besides that, but, uh... It gets kind of noisy and repetitive when it does that. <clears throat> we need another creature so we can play down this botanical or botanical a uh, botanical brawler and then have it trigger the following turn. That is like one problem. It says I, I figured out it's the first time. It means quite literally the first time counters are put on that. It doesn't mean like the first time botanical brawler is out and counters are put on that like. It's not that this ability triggers once per turn for that particular permanent, it's the first time, so when we go to cast this, uh, Botanical Brawler, okay, let's play this out properly. When we go to cast this Botanical Brawler, what's gonna happen is they're all gonna get their plus on, plus on counters, and then it's gonna enter the battlefield, but if we had, like, another creature that was green, uh, Actually, never mind. This did not. It did not do this in a way that was very helpful in demonstrating. Uh, but well, actually, there's no way for me to demonstrate it. But um, if we were to get like another counter on our creatures, like at this particular moment, Botanical Brawler would not get a plus one plus one counter from it because they already got their counters from Defy Vigor beforehand. Opponent really wants to uh, raid this, which is shocking. I mean, we can just put all the counters on Korean Beast Caller or Botanical Brawler. You know, we can split it up. We'll split it up and put quite a few on this one, just so that it's not going to die to a fight spell. But yeah, we want it on the Tramplers, because they can just trample through. This one's got the lifelink. It is cool to see... Uh, Pelucanos getting flipped and then um, splitting. Pelucanos, super cool. 4 5 with reach, 3 mana. They can pay 6 to transform it. Oh, okay. Are you going to attack in with that though? That's the question. They are. I mean, I I can just block it with a serpent blade. <laughs> Sailing, it's not going to do that much. Or we can just take it, honestly. Uh, because then. Then they only have 9 power on defense, and then we can swing in with 4 creatures. Yeah. Let's go take it. And then, uh, well, that's unfortunate. But, hey, things should get bigger when we attack in. If this isn't lethal, I'm, I'll be sad, but... We have 16 trampling damage. We're going to get at least... Uh, oh, they block it that way. Interesting. Yeah. They gain some life here, but I don't think it's enough. Yeah. Indeed. Glad we did not block the, the Tyrannix Rex. That made a difference. We would have lost a creature, and then, then we would have been... Not at lethal there. But I, I want to, I really want to try and curve out here a little bit sm more smoothly, or just uh, show off what happens when you have like the five vigor and botanical brawler out. It gets, it gets pretty crazy. I mean, we did end up with a pretty, pretty big, like two pretty big tramplers. But uh, yeah, the fact that the botanical brawler has trample is super relevant uh, because we, you have like um, the Creon beast collar, which can get really large, but it doesn't get trample, which can be problematic. Awesome, we got another Razor Verge ticket, so we can kind of curve out here. 
Probably, they're probably playing Removal City or ugh, Counterspell. They're holding up Counterspell mana. Um, let's go ahead. We're not going to be able to do anything here, so we're going to just attack in with a Hopeful Initiate, see if they want to kill it. Do they use mana on removing it? No, nope, they didn't. Okay, Streetwise Negotiator it is. I'm not trying to get my Ozolith removed. Oh, come on. No way. <laughs> Moment of truth. Did not expect that. I'm... Scarred from counter spells. Nope. Now we got a 3-3, sort of. Problem is, if this was an actual 3-3, it would be awesome. But since it's not a 3-3, it's awful. <laughs> and the reason being is, if it was a 3-3, at least, uh... It wouldn't die to cut down and everything. Um... No, there's no actual attacks to be made here, unfortunately. I did want to get that Tribute to the World Tree down, though, because that means uh, we can start potentially drawing cards. But yeah, if we play the Ozolith here... No! I hate you! Alright, uh... Play the Ozolith? Question is, do I hold up protection? Opponent's playing the Chromo Seed Shark, so you know they're just going to be flinging a bunch of non-creature spells, and they're only playing the, uh, the Shield Druid to be annoying. Now we have two 5-5s, five which is cool. Swinging with the 5-5, five five, three wise bonk. Technically they're three fives, but you know, sign combat damage equal to their toughness, not bad. But yeah, if they if they were three threes, two mana like two twos that had backup one, it'd be kind of better just because then uh, uh yep, this is <laughs> this is why I want to draw off this tribute. But if I draw off the tribute, I die to the shield root. It's miserable. This card, I I hate it. I hate it so much. It's, like, the worst part about it is it's bigger than every, like, green creature at equally costed mana, basically. It's ridiculous. Alright, well, we're gonna have to pay some life here to draw a card. Ouch. Because if they have another Shieldred's Edict, this is, it's bad for us not to play out a creature, because then we go down to no creatures that can swing in. Not playing out a shield, or, but playing out a creature means that we can't hold up a Tyvar stand, so we die to targeted removal. It's like, ugh. Miserable. Miserable. Uh, yeah. I don't even think we want to play out more of these tributes to the world tree because they're just gonna draw us cards and draw us cards and gonna kill us. Though I think we can't even attack in here, so it doesn't matter at this point. I think we're just done. Like I can attack in, but then they swing in for six next turn, and then we die to shield root on the upkeep. Ay, ay, ay. If you guys know of any deck, or like if you all know of any deck that's very good at like not getting removed, <laughs> I'd love to play it and try and make this sort of control decks miserable. Because, uh, it is, it's, it's silly how you can just kind of drop like one or two creatures, removal spell, removal spell, removal spell, removal spell. And then easily win the game. Alright, we can play everything in our hand, which is super cool. Honestly, I, I don't know if Tribute's... Maybe Tribute is like a card that should go in this deck. It's really good in the green deck that we played uh, the other day, but... Uh, I should probably have not played out this Korean Beast color because it's just going to get removed. But, uh, there's not much we can do about that. Nope. Okay, it's not going to get. Oh, they're playing clerics. Opponent is playing clerics. Well, 
unfortunately I'm gonna go with the tribute to the world tree here because in that case we might actually be able to uh, draw cards without worrying too much and uh, it will grow all the creatures that we have in our hand and our opponent played a tap land so they're not exactly uh, tempoing out perfectly <clears throat> I think we'll play like a Hopeful Initiate and a Blade, uh, Serpent Blade Assailant. So, I guess I should have played this out differently? Nah, fine. Uh, play this one first. Gets counters, and then this one. What we're gonna actually do here, in order to draw a card, is we're gonna order the backup ability first. So that we back up, put a plus one counter on it, it's three power or greater, we get to draw a card instead. We kind of need to keep the gas going. We can back up on the Serpent Blade Assailant here, actually. Though, if we do that, it's going to actually bring down its, like, the damage it can do in combat. Then so maybe we won't do that. You are... lucky. <laughs> That is crazy. That is pretty crazy. What do we trigger first? I think we'll just do this. Create, or I guess we could put a pulse one counter on it so we can start attacking in with it potentially. And then hopefully we'll initiate will grow even more. Go in with these two, or these three. Now we got 12 damage coming in with the Beast Claw and the Hopeful Initiate. I wonder what our opponent's plan is actually, though. It seems like they're mostly, like, mostly white and black. I wonder if they're just playing Rafine's Tower, just because. Sacrifice a creature? I don't know, they just want to transform it. I guess, yeah, they get lifelink and death touch. That's pretty good. Oh, no, what the heck? Oh, man, we should have gotten rid of the... Uh, I didn't even think about it. We could remove the wedding announcement with our hopeful initiate there, potentially. This would be a time where having an Ozolith would be quite good. Then we could uh, remove some things. We're going to go in with everything, I think. Not exactly ideal, but... Actually, we can remove the wedding announcement in response to blocks if we want. Uh, it depends on how they block, though. I think this is... Yeah, it doesn't say activate as a sorcery. Okay, um... I mean, might as well go ahead and remove it. One, two. Actually, I can do remove one and then remove one from the Serpent Blade Assailant because it's not going to really do much otherwise. Or, like, as it stands. Alright, uh... Well, now that I t <laughs> think about it, let's spread out some counters here. This one gets two. And then we can try and attack in for more damage next turn. <clears throat> Keep the board wide so we can go around these Luminarch veterans. Can't just chump block their way out of out of this entirely. Opponent. Another Henry. <laughs> oh my god. And Henrika. Uh. Dom Dominophil? Dominothi. Why do I have to resolve those triggers? Oh, because I have Hopeful Initiate. That's annoying. I'm trying to hold up the game. This player sacrifices the creature. <laughs> Ay, caramba. Oh, this one's the least useful here. <laughs> Third land! Third land off the top. Can 
Like, if we top deck into a non-land, like a creature here, we can potentially draw another card with Tribute to the World Tree, but nope. This is the, the part where we should be trying to draw those Defiler Vigors, those, uh, all those other cards. Then they're going to be able to play out these Luminarch Veterans as their Luminous Phantoms, that whenever they would have a creature leave the battlefield, they gain a life, so they can keep gaining life. They can't make a sack another creature. They can draw a card. Yeah, that's annoying. Nothing we have is trample. We don't have Defiler or the Botanical Brawler. I guess one creature card that we could have put in this deck, but I, I don't know if I have any <laughs> copies of it, is the... Uh, is the Doomscar Warrior would have been quite... Okay, well, I mean, maybe I shouldn't complain about getting another tribute, because this means whenever we do play a creature, we'll, like, most definitely draw a card, but, uh... Is it worth attacking him? I don't even know if it's worth attacking him. We're going to hold up the hopeful initiate just in case our opponent has another wedding announcement. I want to get rid of it before it becomes a problem. <clears throat> opponent. Table flip. Our opponent's name is Table Flip. That's actually uh, interesting. A block with a Henrika on the Gallic Readers. I mean, I guess that gets us some value. We can gain some life with it, but... I guess between that and the Streetwise Negotiator, it makes some sense. The Gallic Readers can, can grow, do anything, actually. It can uh, gain us life. It can grow. Uh, so, yeah. Streetwise Negotiator is stuck at being a 3-5. Opponent. Going to attack him with our Luminous Phantom. You have a Depopulate, don't you? Yeah, that's basically Depopulate. Okay, pop deck a creature. That's the fourth one. <laughs> that is the fourth one. Alright, well... Top deck a creature, we put counters on it, then we draw a card. Alright, time to repeat the process. This gets triggered. Creature. If they have another path to peril, I'm going to cry. Alright, Titania's command can be like sort of recovery, first comes to worst. Also should act as a finisher if they can't remove the botanical brawlers. I think if at least one of the brawlers survives, we should win. Well, actually, they could play out both these phantoms, and then they can chump block some, but still. But yeah, Titanium's Command, we're going to be, most of the time, we're going to be choosing to create two, 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 two green bear tokens, and put two plus one plus one counters on each creature we control. But yeah, that's why Tribute to the World Tree is a good card. It's just not something you get off very often. Okay, they waste some mana on Soul Partition. You have a removal spell for one of our botanical brawlers, though. Because, uh, <laughs> we got quite a bit of trample damage here, and assuming that we hit, like, a single creature here, you're gonna... You're gonna be wishing that you probably use that soul partition on a botanical brawler. I mean, it is also an instant, so they could have just waited until we, uh, went to play something. Oh, yeah. Ozlith. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely the Ozlith. Whenever one or more, or if one or more plus one counters, basically, if we put a counter on something, instead put two. If we put, like, two counters on something, instead put three, you know, add an additional plus one counter to all of your effects. Now, opponent, I'm kind of worried that they have a counter spell here, so we're just going to do something very cheeky and just do this and kill them this way. I really wanted to cast this, but like I'm not wasting uh wasting a chance at a clean win here. They're gonna become seven seven, and that's an eight eight, and then they're gonna 
throw each other more because they see each other gain counters. So yeah. Generally, you want to put the counter... If you have a Botanical Brawler, you want to try and put counters not on the Botanical Brawler because you're going to get counters on them anyways. But yeah, I, our opponent should not have used Soul Partition on that World Tree, but I don't, I don't know if it would have made a difference too much. <clears throat> that was a uh, that was a good game. All right, we'll play one more here. Sorry, I feel like my commentary today has just not been very strong. I've been quite quiet. Mm -mm. I, I run out of things to talk to or talk about uh, right now. I guess I don't know. All right, ten's okay. One mana creature with a protection spell, maybe? Uh, I'm on, honestly not even going to bother playing it until we can protect it. I could play it out here, but uh, at this point, Ozolith seems like a very good card to be playing. Because that means everything we play turns out bigger. Um, yeah, let's play out this, because we can hold up protection for it. I won't put plus ones on it, because I, I, I can only do this at sorcery speed, so it is kind of a loss here, but I can just make it indestructible. I can grow it this way, for like a block or something. Okay. You have a make disappear. Okay, you do not. Um, let's do this. Back up that. Eight becomes a three four, so we can start swinging in for damage. And then this is still a good blocker, even if it's a, it's gonna die. It, it does its job of trading. I feel like we've drawn into this card more than uh, I should have because <laughs> I think there's only two copies of it in the deck. I mean, I could protect it, but there's really no reason. Lightning Announcement is annoying. We can blow it up on our turn. Ooh. Uh, I mean, I... As much as a pain, we're going to attack in first, actually. We can let one hopeful initiate go if they have removal. Remove two plus one plus one counters, and then destroy artifact or enchantment. Bye-bye, wedding announcements. No more tokens for you, no card draw, no anthem. That card is disgusting. Well, this is another great reason to be playing a hopeful initiate and splashing white. Yep, it's not something you can counter with a, like a spell pierce. Shieldred is annoying. Uh, I, mean, I think I have enough to father vigors. I think I will be fine. All right. Uh, so. If we attack in, we pump this up, it gets it becomes a 3-4. We can tie our stand it to give it another power and toughness. No, it's not good enough. Okay, so we'll just hold up two tie our stands and pump them up. Pump one up and then just uh wait a turn. The pun's got us down to 12 life here with the tenacious underdog that we couldn't trade with. And the uh uh now they have shield so they're gonna start gaining life. Children is such a disgusting card. Um, ugh. do I block and Tyvar stand? Sure. And they could counterspell here, and then I just let it die. 
but that means they're not casting Invoke Despair. Honestly, all I care about is not taking the damage from Shieldred and you not casting Invoke Despair. I really didn't want them having Invoke Despair and Shieldred there. But it is kind of annoying that they're tapped out now. <laughs> like, I could... I could go for the, the Father of Vigor here, but then I'm not going to have any protection. They're just going to remove it, and then they're going to invoke Despair, and then we're going to lose. So what is the right play? Pump up the Hopeful Initiate, hold up Tyvar Sand? I guess. I guess that is the right play. I mean, they have they have a ridiculous amount of mana open, so the fact that they aren't going for removal and hopeful initiate. They should go for it on this turn because then I can't tie our sand when I go to block. Ah, it's an emperor. I'm not overconfident. You're just We must protect. <sighs> our opponent is playing quite the quite the meta deck. You're kidding me. Oh wait, now we can still block it. That's the blockers. Block. One blocker. Pump it up one so that we can actually trade. I hope our opponent doesn't have another counter spell. Yeah. Oh. I want to concede so this game's over, but... I'll have a fraction of hope. That's what I'll try and demonstrate. Hope. No, we actually just die. We have to block the shield root. If we don't block the shield root, we die on our upkeep. And then if we block the shield root, there's no hope of winning because we can't ever develop the board because we don't have enough mana. And we drew into three to five our vigors. Ay, caramba. I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. Did I say that was the last game? Okay, well, I'll play one more because I can't remember what I said, and we'll play, and then this will be the last game. And then we'll go hop over, hop over, like, hop back to the deck uh, so you can take a look at it, and I will direct you, direct you to the, the video that we played yesterday, which, uh, well, we didn't play a video yesterday, or do, <laughs> the deck we played yesterday, you know, I can't, you know, what? English is hard. Uh, Maximum Decidus. Maximus Decidus. Whoops. Okay. Please be like mono white toxic so we can dunk on you. If you're mono white toxic, we just straight up dunk. I'm not even kidding. Ay, <laughs> caramba. At least we get another botanical brawler. Oh, nope, it's Orzhov Phyrexians. I hate it already. I mean, we've actually had a positive win rate. And I've this is one of the decks that I've played a ton of games with. Like, I played Standard Q, and now we're playing, like, six games of Ranked Q. So, fourth. The Tyvar Stand. Oh, you have removal, don't you? Gross. Well, we can't block with this Grell. So I will go ahead and do that. And then, oh my goodness, this is beautiful. This is actually so good. So we play out this. That one grows because that one sees it. This one gets a counter. And then this trains and they both get bigger. Dude, Hope will initiate with Botanical Brawler. It's so good. It's so good. It's crazy. And then on top of that is we can use Hope will initiate as like a removal. Or enchantments and artifacts, so just a really good Swiss Army knife card here. You can send the scrolls flying and flip their invasion of Gabokan, but then we can like remove their Elspeth and remove their. Actually, we probably just kill them here. I'm not gonna actually cap. Not going to lie. I think they might die. So we just like play out this. That pumps up. Yeah, this this gotta be lethal. This has got to be lethal. We play this. All the botanical brawlers gain counters because they see each other. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> no way. And uh, yeah, go face. They train, and then they grow even bigger. 
and you're dead. Yeah. <clears throat> you have to flip the invasion, but uh, at what price? You definitely should not have taxed the, the Tyvar stand unless you're planning to cast removal. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and head into the deck deck. That was an awesome game to end off on. Uh, but... Yeah, this is the deck. If you enjoyed this video, perhaps you'll enjoy the previous video that we did with, like, Tribute to the World Tree, I think is the, the last video that we did, where we... No, that's a lie. We did Blinkasaurus last video, where we blinked Atali a bunch of times to cast spells from our opponent's library, and, like, we would hopefully chain into more blink spells off the top of our library. It was super cool. Uh, we also played a deck where we played Tribute to the World Tree with a bunch of uh, cards like Awaken the Woods to make a bunch of, like, 3 threes as well as, like, other cards to draw cards. Played Nissa with the Awaken the Woods, you know, create your hoof, swing in, remove our opponent. So, yeah, hopefully if you enjoyed the video, um, you know, consider leaving a like, comment, subscribing, all that good stuff helps out a ton. Have a nice morning, evening, night, afternoon, wherever and whenever you're watching. Ciao.